Aren't they optimal? Of course not. If they're optimal, I should program not profitable things. You can't prove they're optimal. You can't prove it. They're optimal. Okay? So, in that case, what actually happens? In that case, what actually happens? They're not. So, what they could be? They, what is your guess? So, my guess is they are linear independent. So, let's look at this eigenvectors. Are they linear independent? <coughs> so, next question I'm talking about these three eigenvectors. Remember that we are talking about non symmetric matrix. <coughs> we are talking about
I equals to 1 to 1. So now, next step will be what? Remember that our objective is to prove what are independent. Okay? That's what my objective is. So I said that for non symmetric matrix for discrete eigenvalues, our eigenvectors have to be independent. Right? So, and here I'm assuming that up to R independent and R plus 1 to NR dependent. Okay? R plus 1 to NR dependent. Right? So in that case, what you do, multiply both sides by Q, R plus A, U, R plus 1, I equals to 1 to R, alpha I prime, A, Q, I prime. U, R plus, R plus 1 is an eigenvector. Corresponding eigenvalue is? Corresponding eigenvalue is? Lambda R plus 1. So what should I write? Lambda R plus 1, U R plus 1. Am I correct? Am I correct? And here, what should I write? Similarly, I deliberately multiply them to the scalar quantity. So it is lambda U I equals to 1 to 1. Alpha I, lambda I, U I. So this is my equation number A. Equation number B. Like that. 
that this equation and here you can see all alphas are zero that means this vector cannot be expressed as a linear combination of these basis vectors please do not confuse this one and this and this okay this means this is linear independent set and this any vector in a vector space can be expressed as a linear combination of basis vectors and you can see that you cannot write the combination because all the coefficients are becoming zero so this vector cannot be expressed as a linear combination of all basis vectors therefore all these eigen vectors are linearly dependent so these eigen vectors cannot be expressed as a linear combination of this and that must be all these eigen vectors have to be linearly dependent that means what you can actually put it here you can put it here in, in a time okay we are saying r plus one you cannot write next r plus two same thing will happen you put it in the box next r plus three like that you win and then you can actually prove that you want to win all dependent that's it Right? Any confusion? No doubts. So uh, we have seen that we have seen two interesting phenomena for the non-symmetric matrix. The eigen vectors are okay. Eigen vectors are linearly dependent, and those eigen vectors are not orthogonal to each other. But orthogonality criteria has been found with the complex conjugate matrices eigen vectors, and for those. Eigen vectors in the complex conjugate system. Eigen vector in the complex conjugate system will be the will be orthogonal, the corresponding the real matrix eigen vector. So we have seen all the interesting uh, issues of eigen vectors, not only for the symmetric matrix, non-symmetric matrix as well. So uh, generally speaking, when the eigen values are distinct, they are called as algebraically simple. They are called as algebraically simple. So. Uh, well, so, I, algebraically simple means the eigenvalues are not repeated, and when the eigenvalues are repeated, they are called as geometric multiplicity. They are called as geometric multiplicity. When the eigenvalues are repeated, they are called as geometric. They are called as geometric multiplicity. They are called as geometric multiplicity. So, so what actually happens? I have not discussed the last part. The non-symmetric matrix eigen vectors are repeated. I know that for the symmetric matrix eigen vectors are repeated. Eigen vectors are also are fine. The question comes: If eigen vectors are repeated, what will happen to the eigen vectors? How will you get the eigen vectors? First of all, in symmetric matrix, if you recall, today is today very beginning. I told that the symmetric matrix the eigen vectors are two and two. Your dimension of mass space should be two. If the eigen vectors are two, 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 two. That we should ask as to be three. Is that the case for the non-symmetric matrix? Let's talk about that. So now we will now we are going to discuss. Example problem. That is symmetric matrix. 
then how to get this, this, this argument vector? So that's the open question. So what actually happens? You have a minus lambda 1 i u 1 equals to 0. With that, you are getting your eigenvector. How to get second eigenvector? So second eigenvector a minus lambda 1 u2 equals to 0. You get the same equation. You get the same thing, right? You basically solve the same thing. So then u1 and u2 are same. Cannot be. Cannot be. You cannot have, as I said, although eigenvectors are repeated, eigenvectors cannot be repeated. They are different because each eigenvalue has a corresponding direction and they must be different. Means I saw the coordinate geometry today. Each eigenvector represents a direction and these directions are different. And we have proved in this previous thing, these all eigenvectors are living independent. If you now say these both eigenvectors are same, you are violating the previous theorem. What we just did two minutes back, eigenvectors are living independent for any matrix. So each what a no matter, they are the same, they represent direction and these directions are living independent. So this u2 has to be different from u1, not even a multiplication. Multiplication in the same direction. If you say, okay, I put alpha 2, you get another eigenvector. It's not correct. Because it will be the same direction. It will the same direction. I want an independent direction. How to get it? So the answer is, so this is the kind of, this is the way. So what I am essentially doing, I am trying to do this kind of stuff. A minus lambda is going to lose it. So I am saying, it doesn't mean that a minus lambda is going to lose it. A minus lambda is going to lose it. So I am saying a minus lambda is going to lose it. So that is the way we can actually uh, talk about the, uh, uh, and in that case, it is possible to prove that a minus lambda 1 if u equal to u2 equals to u. So, what we do here, we will try to multiply here. Saying that, I am not getting. See, this has got repeat. Set n 
repeated again once. Okay? And you should get any eigenvectors. Okay? But you will give only one eigenvector. And the measuring dimension of mass equals to 1. Okay? It is mostly the case. You are lucky then you get dimension of mass 2 or 3. Now how about the next one? So next will be, I am saying extend this equation, which is square u1 equals to 0. Okay? That means what? That means you can write as a minus lambda n i square, and this will be another eigenvector. It is the first eigenvector and the second eigenvector. Right? u2 equals to, and then u1 already. You got a minus lambda and i u equals to. So did you find that what is the generalized eigenvector? Concept is clear. So this u2 is called the generalized eigenvector, which are obtained by this one. Yeah. No, I didn't say symmetric. I am doing not symmetric matrix. Symmetric matrix simulation is over. We have gone, we have, we have gone uh, far from symmetric matrix. For symmetric matrix, there is no question of uh, generalized eigenvectors. What we say there? The eigenvectors are orthogonal. We found that. And there is no question of generalized eigenvectors. Because dimension of mass specific matrix. If there are three repeats, dimension of mass specific three, and we will be getting three basis vectors and all those bases are orthogonal. That's why I say non space bases in general are not orthogonal. But for the symmetric matrix, non space bases are orthogonal and that will give the guarantee we will be getting orthogonal eigenvectors to non space bases. There is no portion of geometry, the generalized eigenvector. We have not discussed that. Why is there? If there are three defeats, we will get one eigenvector, maximum two generalized eigenvectors. Maximum. You could be having two eigenvectors from the line at the mass space and you can have one general eigenvector also if you are lucky. First you get non space vectors and then based on that you can actually decide. Any questions? Any doubts? Any questions? No, no, no doubts. Okay. Now we are coming to the point how to solve AX equals to B without solving. That's the open question still. How to solve AX equals to B without solving? Eigenvectors, 
So, bottom line is this known. Eigenvectors are known. If I give a matrix, you can find eigenvectors. Right? These are known. Only unknown is alpha. If I find alpha, you always know. You have got the solution. So, you don't have to do all solution. Only thing you need to find eigenvectors. Eigenvectors, eigenvectors. If you find eigenvectors, those eigenvectors will be giving you solution. How? So, we write this as summation i equals to 1 to m alpha i dy equals to b. You can write this as summation i equals to 1 to m alpha i a e y equals to b. So, AEI is not approximate anything. 
So this process will not work for solving the system. So geometric basis vectors, although they are easy to visualize, they are the coordinate axis, they are not the good basis vectors. Eigen vectors are the best basis, best basis vectors. So now we can understand what are the applications of eigen vectors. If somebody asks in an interview or something, why we need eigen vectors? Eigen vectors are the good basis vectors and uh, they are always linearly dependent and uh, for solving the large system, if you don't want to solve without solving, we can use the eigen vectors as basis vectors and with that we can get the solution even without solving. So if somebody gives you the eigen values and eigen vectors, that's it. So in MATLAB you can easily get eigen values and you can actually get eigen vectors. And once you get eigen values, eigen vectors, you are on the business, you have the, you have the solution. You don't have to go for the loss and emission and everything and enter the process. Okay? Can we apply the same thing for if A is non symmetric matrix? If A is non symmetric, how to get the solution without something? If A is non symmetric, how to get solution without something? So now the next case is A is non symmetric. Who can tell me the answer? 
So here I have just missed out one small thing here, should be lambda RT. Please correct me out. Okay. So what is the alpha here? Alpha you mean? Yes, last part one thing should have responded to that. Alpha will be what? Inner product of B, uh, Bj bar divided by lambda i. Inner product? U i bar and Bj bar bar. There are bar and there are bar. It should be U i bi bar. Alpha I am saying. So because ui bj part will be 0. So only those terms will remain in ui bi bar. Okay? So alpha i is nothing but inner product b bar bi bar divided by lambda i ui bi bar. So without sorting, you can solve x equals to b even for the non-symmetric matrices. What I step? Yes or no? Yes. So next part, I'll be uh, slowly starting. I will not complete next part. I will take another two three minutes before uh, finishing the class, which is called as solvability technique. This is then uh, problem set three. So if you learn today something, you can actually try to crack problem three. It is being problem four. Sit for next class. I need it because I'll be solving problem set four class, problem set four problems next class onwards.
we get a u1 minus u2 equals to 0. And we know that this matrix is not non-singular and this has got trivial, right? So u1 minus u2 have to be 0 because matrix is non-singular. That means u1 equals to so this is the way one can actually so these are basically called as essentially uh, solubility criteria. I'll be discussing more on that on on Monday. So I guess uh, so many things actually covered for today. You will try to review it yourself and try to read up. So if you want to catch up in the class, better when you come to the class, you try to read the stuff. I can see that only very few are responding to my class. This is not a good sign because you have to get good grades and all those things. So I think it's better for your own benefit you should read up otherwise the people who are reading regularly they get lots of benefit